Hey guys, today I want to share with you 10 ways how you can save money and how I am saving money and how I have saved money in the past. The first tip would be to get a simple phone plan. Get the cheapest option available for you. For example, when I was living in London, I had a SIM card. I topped it up every month and I only paid five pounds. I decided not to have internet on my phone, so I had Wi-Fi on my phone whenever there was Wi-Fi, and that was it. I was able to have free texts, free phone calls for five pounds per month. So look into whatever the cheapest option available for you is and go with it, because there's no need to spend a hundred dollars or fifty, sixty, seventy euros or pounds on a simple phone plan. My second tip would be set a certain budget on food and go for non-processed, unpackaged food over all the packaged, processed stuff. And ever since I went vegan, grocery shopping is a lot cheaper. If you cut down on the meat or eliminate it altogether, you will save loads of money. And of course, having a certain budget for food is always helpful. Of course, I'm not advocating to have a really limited budget because you do want to get all your nutrients. But having a budget in place that allows you to get all your nutrients from your diet while eating a great variety of food definitely helps. My third tip would be to buy whatever you can second hand. For example, I buy the majority of my clothing second hand and if I can't find something second hand, then I seek out an ethical retailer. For example, recently I had to buy new underwear and as of now I'm not 100% sure how I'm supposed to feel about the changes American Apparel is about to make. I've been loving what they have done in the past and although I'm not sure how I'm supposed to feel about what they're doing right now, I supported them and purchased a couple of underpants and I love them. So buy whatever you can secondhand and that goes for clothing as well as for your home. And whatever you do need to buy new, try to seek out a retailer that matches up with your values. So I love going out to eat but I only do it every once in a while. So right now I'm eating out more often than I usually would because I'm in Austria and then I will be traveling a bit. So I don't have a permanent location right now. But usually I only go out to eat every couple of months and usually only whenever there's a special occasion, for example, whenever I haven't seen a friend in months or whenever it's someone's birthday or anniversary, then I would go out for dinner. But I wouldn't just go out on a weekly basis. That for me would seem wasteful in a way. And yes, I'm very frugal when it comes to that. And that is why I set myself a budget of 40 pounds for eating as well as drinking out. So set yourself a budget and don't go out to eat if you don't necessarily have to go out to eat. And whenever you do go out to eat, support restaurants that match up with your values. For example, I love to go to vegan places over any other places. The fifth one is take public transportation if it's available for you. For me, London has an amazing public transportation system and so has Vienna and so has Berlin. So whenever there is a good public transport system in place, take advantage of it. I don't even have a driving license, so it's not that I could just take a car and drive it. I am reliant on public transportation and I would only move to places where public transportation system would be in place. And if there wouldn't be one in place and if I would envision myself to live there long term, then I would of course take my driving license. But as of now, I don't deem that as a necessity. 
The sixth one, don't shop for leisure. Only shop when you truly need something. And yes, you could think that is a no-brainer, but when I was 15 and 16, 17, around that age, I oftentimes found myself just browsing and not necessarily shopping much, but I was looking. And these days, I only really go shopping whenever I need something, and that is twice a year. Unless, of course, I ran out of suitable underwear, things like that, and I will, of course, purchase something during the year. But other than that, I shop twice a year, and that has saved me a ton of money. Number seven, whenever I moved to New York City two years ago, I got rid of all of my books. And some of those books I had for years, and they were highlighted, and I had notes in them, and I had stickers in them. I really love those books and some of them have read multiple, multiple times, but I eventually decided to let go of all of my books and ever since that time I went to libraries, I went to a library in New York City, I went to libraries in London and not only has it saved me a lot of money, it has also made it possible for me to read loads of books at the same time and whenever I wasn't fond of a book I would take it straight back to the library versus previously I would buy books, would find them really interesting and then I would simply realize that that book is not for me and I would be stuck with the book. And with libraries you don't have that. You have a variety of books, you can pre-order books, you can have books transferred from one library to the other. Usually all the services are free and it's amazing. I can't recommend it enough. And of course, it will save you a lot of money. Number eight, share a place. If you're on a budget and if you want to save as much money as you can, get a room in a shared house. And no matter in which city you're living or, or to which city you want to move to, there usually are rooms available. And of course, rooms are always cheaper than getting your own place. Or I'll take that back, in most cases, rooms are cheaper than getting your own place. And as for me, I've lived in flat shares in New York City, in Berlin, and recently in London, and I've been really, really enjoying it. And of course, if you have the option or if you want to, you can always move back to your parents' place for a limited amount of time to save as much money as possible. For me personally, that wouldn't be an option. I would simply not want to do that. But if it's an option for you, go ahead and take advantage of it. Number nine, give couch surfing a try. I'm a huge advocate of couch surfing. I met my babe through couch surfing. I met some of my closest friends on couch surfing and I've hosted people in Berlin and I've surfed in Hungary, I've surfed in Sweden, I've surfed in Spain. I think it's an amazing platform to meet people, to really get involved, to really indulge in a new culture and to make the most of any of your trips. You can choose to stay with people, you can choose to simply meet up with people. Whatever it is that you're doing, try couch surfing. It will save you money, but if you only see couch surfing as a free place to stay, then please don't use it because couch surfing is all about meeting new people, making new connections, sharing your interests, having insightful discussions, and it is not just a free place where you can crash. So be mindful with that, and if you're curious, I will link the website down below. Number 10, I recently decided to no longer drink alcohol and prior to that I was only drinking maybe one or two drinks a night every couple weeks. So if you really want to save money just cut back on the alcohol or quit it altogether, and you will see that you will save a bunch of money especially if you're someone who goes out for drinks every weekend and drinks 10 beers a night two times a week on the weekend, then simply cutting down on that one will save you a lot of money, plus it will make you 
a lot healthier. That was it for my 10 ways to save money. Please let me know what your ways of saving money are and how you feel about those ways of reducing your spending. Do you eat out a lot? Do you drink a lot? How much is your phone plan? Where are you cutting back to save for what's truly important to you? I would love to hear from you as always. Have a lovely day and see you guys next time.